I know a few superheroes. One of them was my dad, Clive. He wasn't a superhero when I was nine. He was my supervillain. I loved swimming. I wanted to be the next Shane Gould when I was nine, and I was good. I beat Maureen Rooney. But when my friends were dive bombing off the Manuka pool, I was in、um, looking after our family laundry mat in Kingston. I had to because the manager went on holidays. My dad would pop down from our furniture shop just to check on me to see that I was okay. My ta- dad told me I had to give up swimming because I would get big shoulders. I did, but I didn't like it. My brother Jim was in Scouts, but I wasn't allowed to join Girl Guides. I was the oldest girl of eight. I cooked, I cleaned, I babysat, and I did what all good older sisters did: help bring up my siblings. My father said I couldn't join Girl Guides until I could wash up properly. I tried and I tried. I was never going to be able to wash up properly. Later, my father sent me to boarding school when I was in year 11 and 12 to Goulburn. I had an older brother; he was three years older than me. He had lots of friends who used to come over. So when I was 15, I started going out with one of his friends. And as soon as this was found out, I was told I wasn't allowed to have a boyfriend until I was 18. Those years. When going to boarding school taught me so much about how to be independent, and to put up with even more archaic views from nuns than I'd ever got from my father. When I left school, Dad used to question my friends and say, "Who were at uni? Why are you doing that?" I went to secretarial studies at、um, a secretarial college. But when I went to uni later and did my masters of management, I did a whole course around what I learnt. I can Canberra's Ideas and Innovation Festival. I created a festival around it. It was about entrepreneurship, creativity, and it was absolute an innovation. By the way, typing at 80 words a minute is a skill that I'll always value. <laughs> Thank goodness my dad did that. The whole time I was secretly internally rebelling against my father's iron will and old-fashioned ways, I was learning everything I needed to know about life. My father taught me to work. He taught me to be a very capable human being. I worked in family service and retail businesses on weekends, school holidays, and after school. I learned what if if a customer wanted something, there was always a way to get it. I learned how to communicate, how to operate, and how to treat people. He taught me how to compromise. Many people would say, or some people would say, "Boy,、um, that was a disadvantage." But I learned a lot about people through that process. It was like I was switched at birth. My brothers and sisters did as they were directed. Directed. I always questioned. Every superhero has his flaws. Superman's was Chris Knight and、um, Clark Kent. My dad was too strict. I saw things differently than my dad, but I loved him. It was my mum, Joan, who taught me to follow my heart and my dreams. She taught me to be happy. Happiness is a decision, and I've always wanted to emulate her. This is possibly the most、um, important thing to my secret behind my success. I believe happiness is a decision, and it's a choice that you make. I've had hard times, like everyone else my age. But I've always chosen to be happy, and I can get into most boardrooms because I'm that nice girl, that happy girl who gets things done, who makes things happen. My mum will turn 80 next birthday. She sets the intent for our family business on how it's operating, and how everyone should operate. She still goes to our motel every morning, and you'll see her serving tables. I know I'm onto something when someone tells me you can't do something. My father turned me into this barometer. What I learned from him is gold: my tenacity and my determination to do whatever it takes to follow my passion and deliver it. A lot of people think I created the, Austra- the Australian Science Festival. I didn't. I took it over after its first difficult year and ran it for 18 years. I kick-start national science, kick-started National Science Week along the way and ran that for eight years as well, and set up partnerships all over Australia. 
I turned over a million dollars in cash, making science sexy. It was a greater cause than me. And then when I went in and did the science festival, everyone said, don't touch it. It was part of the Canberra Festival in the first year. And of course I did. I ran an enormously successful science festival with unprecedented media. And when I created National Science Week, someone said to me, or several people said to me, don't do it. It'll compromise what you've done for Canberra. I did it because it was important. I did it because it was important to our nation. And I'm really proud of the fact that I've helped ignite science communication across Australia where people actually participate and own it. I'm really also pleased to not be doing the science festival anymore. It was great to do it for the time that I did it, but there's so many more important things that we can do in this city, Canberra. Because science, there's more to Canberra than science. We have a wonderful leadership opportunity in Canberra over the next little while, the next couple of years, because we have the centenary in 2013. When I decided to do outside broadcasts some time ago and theme them with ABC Radio National on science, a bureaucrat said to me, you shouldn't be doing obese, you should be concentrating on Canberra. Fortunately, it wasn't her decision. To date, I've done over 78 outside broadcasts with the ABC and they reach millions of people and many, most times we had a Canberran on the panel. There was so much talent here to choose from. If someone tells you you can't do something, you've got to wonder, why do they care? Why on earth are they trying to stop you from doing it? Business is in my blood. I was bred in it. I come from a priv privileged business background. I'm just an ordinary person wanting to do extraordinary things. Dad would never agree that I was equal and he would never give me a compliment because he thought it might go to my head. Whilst I never agreed with my dad on that point, I was always chuffed when Mum used to tell me, oh, Dad was talking about you when I wasn't there and telling everyone what I was up to. If your heart's involved, you'll succeed. If you follow your passion, your intelligence will follow. Basically, if you're bold and go after it, you can make things happen. I did, and sometimes I was always able to get someone to partner with me on whatever idea I had at the time. I think it was because I was doing something greater, greater than myself, and it was, wasn't always about profit. I can Canberra's Ideas and Innovation Festival. I wanted to make it an instant hit when I first started it. I got James Dyson, the 38th richest man from Europe, the inventor of the Dyson bagless vacuum cleaner to come to Canberra. I rang his office in Sydney and talked them into an interview. I came down with a proposal, went and saw them and voila, James Dyson flew in on his private jet to Canberra. We filled the National Convention Centre with 200, 2,500 people and all our partners. Everyone was happy, it was a huge success. But one of the big things that I think personally was the success out of that, every event I did like that, I put a Canberran on the panel. A guy called Steve Longford, who was unknown, who was a criminal profiler, an ex-criminal profiler, and the most amazing trainer in persuasion and deception, he's now, we launched his career in Canberra. He's now one of the most sought-after trainers in our country, and he lives in this city. I got Good News Week to come to Canberra for five years in a row, two shows back to back. We, pay, we got 2,500 people per show to pay. We took all the financial risk. And every show, I got a Canberran on the panel. It went to over 2 million people. We even got our chief minister, who was a former um, pharmacist, Kate Carnell, to be um, an uh, ambassador comedian on one of the shows. Two years ago, my dad died after spending five months in hospital with bowel cancer. So what did I do? I put, I put on an event with ABC Radio National on an event called Dying with Dignity because I saw my dad die with dignity. John James Hospital has the most beautiful people who looked after my dad. They gave him depression pills and he had a really nice time for the last five months of his life. What a shame that he ever, never went to the doctor beforehand because he probably could have used them earlier. But you know what? He was a great man. I loved my dad. And that, that show had standing room only. It was a humongous success. My journey is about equality and being part of humanity. You get the best out of people if you treat them with respect. 
My father was a charismatic man and he hosted lots of parties. We lived in a really dynamic and creative neighbourhood who, and, and lots of people used to come to our home. We had people like Sir Mark Oliphant, Sir Frank Fenner, who eradicated smallpox. We had the ambassadors for the UK, New Zealand and France who used to come over. Maggie Shepherd, the fashion designer, and of course the founder of the National Library of Australia, Sir Harold White, and his beautiful wife, Elizabeth. They were just people. They were just people who came to our parties and, ta and taught me to treat them as such. In my many years of bringing famous scientists and business people to Canberra, and connecting with them, I've learned that all they really want to do is just connect as human beings. Lord Robert Winston, author and presenter of the wonderful television series The Human Body, and Stephen Jay Gould, one of the world's most famous scientists, two beautiful human beings come to mind. When Lord Winston came to Canberra, he was here for six hours. He did an address at the National Press Club. And afterwards he said to me, was that all right? He had no idea how fantastic he was. He just wanted to connect. He just wanted to share stories about himself and find out who you were. By the way, his address was covered on the front page of every metrop metropolitan newspaper in this country. Stephen Jack Gould did a fa fantastic job at Llewellyn Hall to a, a, a full theatre with David Bellamy. And after the event in the VIP room, a guy came up to him and said, so, what's it like being famous? And he just turned to me and said, can you and I just go and have a drink somewhere? They just wanted to connect. They're just fabulous human beings. Tell me who you walk with and I'll tell you who you are. This is an old Spanish proverb that one of my best friends, Maria, taught me. Surround yourself with people you like in your private and public life. Don't do business with people you don't like. You'll hate it. And what would be the point? I'm proud to walk with my family and my friends and have had the privilege to work with some of the most wonderful minds on this planet. Why don't people share? My prediction is people will stop being driven by competition and begin collaborating. I didn't get a bike till I was 10, but I could ride a bike. I was the best negotiator in the street. My children got a bike when they were two. Why don't people share? Is it that we all feel isolated? Is it the fact that the modern world encourages individualism and, and materialism? I'm not sure, but I think a lot of people are getting pretty sick of this. Sometimes we need to do big things to make a big difference. And we need to get, have a big idea to unite everybody for the common and collective good and to share. Australians are innately competitive. We, in sport is our national pastime. And we know how to compete, but we also know how to act as a team and to share and to work together. This is my big prediction. The pendulum is about to swing back, as pendulums always do. Magic happens when we collaborate, and it doesn't when we compete. And you get better results, and you feel better about yourself. Superheroes are dedicated to protecting the public. I come from a pioneering family who have always believed in something greater than themselves. For many of them, it was Canberra, even before Canberra was made. This is my grandfather, my great-grandfather, John Joseph Cusack. He was the mayor of Yass. He was also a federal politician who had the casting vote for Canberra to become the capital of Australia in his electorate, Eden Monero. What a superhero he was to get that happening. He also was a blacksmith and had 22 staff. The women who've come before me in my family have always worked in family businesses and they've always supported their menfolk as leaders. Canberra held its collective breath last year when this guy, Charles Landry, an urban and cultural planner from the UK, got 150 people, leaders from our community, to self-raid our city. Canberra passed overall with a, represent, uh, with a score of 5.4 out of 10, which was respectable. But we really scored poorly on leadership. We got 3.4 out of 10. Canberra is now set with an exceptional opportunity. We shouldn't be complacent. We shouldn't say, well, that's just the way it is. We are, why are we compromising? This, this centenary is in 2013. We've just self-rated our city 3.4 out of 10. 
I owe it to my grandfather, great-grandfather, to help turn this around. This is a scorecard that Charles Landry got 150 people to do. 150 planners, bureaucrats, artists, entrepreneurs, educators and business leaders self-rated our city, Canberra. 3.4 is not good enough. We need to do something about it. This is a beautiful city. We have so much potential. We have so many wonderful leaders and so many smart people who live here. It took a cultural planner, a city whisperer, someone who was an urban planner, to tell us what is possible, that if we collaborate and work together, we could actually make a difference. Landry, Charles Landry, will be back here in October. He will be working with a whole lot of leaders in this city to try and help us turn that around. If anyone is interested in talking to me about what we can do to change this, I'd love to talk to you. I come from a long line of superheroes. I try to be a superhero and sometimes I succeed. I see people competing all the time and not collaborating. I think it all comes down to leadership and we need leaders who want Canberra to be the best it can be to move forward and say this is not enough. We need to challenge policy sometimes. We need to challenge what's happening and not enough people are ambassadors for our city and speak out. I dream that we could have a community of leaders, a citizens committee for Canberra, who would want to build this city to be the city it could be, who would challenge and who would ask people to actually support the change. What would you do if you could help Canberra? Thank you.